Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be dealing with a radical expression. A very radical expression. And then we're going to raise it to some powers and, you know, we're going to evaluate it. So we're given that x is equal to 1 plus the cube root of 2 plus the cube root of 4. And we're supposed to evaluate x cubed minus 3x squared plus 3x. Now, I'll be presenting two methods. And almost as always, we're going to start with the more painful version. But, uh, but no pain, no gain, right? That's our mantra. So the first method, first method basically is just plug it in. <laughs> right? Okay, so we're just going to plug it in and see what happens. That's basically brute force. So we're going to replace x with this thing here, a very radical expression. If you do that, you're going to get the following. 1 plus cube root of 2 plus the cube root of 4 will be cubed minus 3 times the same expression squared plus 3 times that expression. So that's going to be a lot of work, right? Not difficult or maybe a little complicated. Just going to have to deal with radicals. And you just have to be careful. One of the things that I want to bring up here is I think it's an important identity that will help you if you go with the first method is a plus b plus c quantity cubed. Obviously, you can come up with a formula every time, but I'd like to remember or remind you maybe what the formula is. So if you're trying to cube um, a trinomial, then you get the following. Obviously, the first three terms are going to be the sum of the cubes. And then you're going to get some uh, cubic terms, but in the form of like a squared b, a b squared, a squared c, so on and so forth. So do, there's a good way to come up with those, and it is by multiplying the two-way sums, a plus b, a plus c, and b plus c all together by 3. And this is what it is. Isn't that nice? So by using this idea, I can basically take this, right, and then cube it. And what happens if I cube it? I'm just going to run through this, 1 plus 2 plus 4, and then plus 3. Now AB is going to be this times this, so it's going to be like cube root of 2. And then I'm going to have 1 times cube root of 4. And then finally, cube root of 8. The, if you multiply these two things, notice that you get cube root of 8 because they're like radicals. And cube root of 8 is 2. So you can just write 2 for b plus c. Okay? Make sense? All right. So, actually, this is not right. I, I guess I just multiply them. Never mind. Back up. Okay. So the right way to do it is 3 times a plus b. So a plus b is going to be 1 plus cube root 2. Correction. And then 1 plus cube root of 4. I was kind of like rushing. And then 1 plus, um, not 1 plus. Okay, take your time. Slow down. Cube root of 2 plus cube root of 4. Okay. So now, we're going to multiply these, right? So the, usually the way I do it is I'm going to multiply these two things. And then multiply the product by this. And multiply by 3, of course. But to keep a long story short, Let's go ahead and give you the answer uh, right away because that's going to be a little painful. So we're going to get a 7 from here. And from here, we're going, to be, we're going to be getting 12 plus 15 cube root of 2 plus 12 cube root of 4. That's what we're going to get after we simplify everything. So this is the, uh, the a plus b plus c cubed. And now we've got to evaluate the square. Cube root of 2, cube root of 4, and you got to, I'm going to square first and then multiply by negative 3 later because it's easy to substitute. And this will be when you square this thing, you're going to get 5 plus 4 times the cube root of 2 plus 3 times the cube root of 4. Again, I did the work for you. This is 1 plus cube root of 2 plus the cube root of 4 cubed. Make sense? I got the cube. I got the square one times. The first power is going to be the exact same thing. So needless to write it. And now let's put it together. x cubed minus 3x squared plus 3x. This is what it's going to look like. Let me go ahead and give you the answer again. It's basically going to be, I mean, if you just plug it in, you're going to get the following. 7 plus 6 times the cube root of 2 plus 6 times the cube root of 4. 
Of course, you kind of had to take this, right? Multiply this by 3 and subtract from this. And then just subtract or add 3 times the original expression. Make sense? Okay. And then this is what you get. So notice that we start off with a number like this. So I could probably write that number in the form a plus b times the cube root of 2 plus c times the cube root of 4. And you raise it to any integer power, the number is going to be in the same form. That's what's kind of nice about these um, structures, these types of things uh, that kind of form uh, special uh, structures like, you know, rings and groups and so on and so forth. But when they're multiplied together, they basically generate similar uh, stuff. Anyways, this, I know this was a very non-rigorous explanation, no, not at all rigorous, but who cares, right? Anyway, so we got the idea, hopefully. This is the answer. Well, not a very nice and clean answer. I don't know what you were expecting, but this is what it is. So the second method, we're going to try to get the same thing, but in a shorter way. If you already know what the second method is, write down your answer and see if you get the same thing or just do it that way. Okay, here's the second method. So obviously, when you see something like this, what are you thinking? And I'm pretty sure there's a uh, third way to do it. This is a special type of expression. Why is it special? Because we have cube root of 2 and cube root of 4. So if you call this a, this will be a squared, right? But not only that, we have two radicals and one is not necessarily like an irrational number, right? So wouldn't it make sense if we separated the irrationals from the rest so that we can kind of cube or square both sides, whatever is appropriate, right? So in this case, we're going to go ahead and leave these alone and subtract one from both sides. And you're going to see in a little bit why that also makes sense. There are two reasons for that. First reason is it makes sense to uh, isolate the radicals so that we can cube both sides. If you don't isolate and still cube both sides, you know that you're going to keep getting the same type of terms. But with this approach, you're basically going to get rid of uh, some radicals. You're still going to have some radicals, but it's going to be better than the other way around. Make sense? Okay. Second reason why we do this is the expression that we're supposed to evaluate, which is this one. Now, think about it. So x minus 1 cubed is x cubed minus 3x squared plus 3x minus 1. Uh-oh. That is very close to what I'm trying to find, right? Just one short, or maybe the other way around. So this is going to help us. I can go ahead and isolate this. So I can write x cubed minus 3x squared plus 3x as x minus 1 cubed plus 1. And guess what? We know what x minus 1 is. It's this one. Wow, that's amazing, right? Okay, so cube root of 2 plus cube root of 4 is the same thing as x minus 1, so I can just cube it and add 1, and I'll get the answer. And obviously, this is much better than the first method, isn't it? If you cube this one, and you're going to get something like this, 2 plus 4 plus 3 cube root of 8. I'm using my uh, shortcut. And then you're going to get this, and obviously plus 1. 2 plus 4 plus 1 is 7. And then 6, because this is 2. 6 times cube root of 2 plus 6 times the cube root of 4. And guess what? That is the exact same thing that we got with the first method. Let's compare. Yay, we got the same thing. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know what you think. Be safe, take care. Until next time and bye-bye.